Good evening. Welcome to the annual Rocky Mountain Fire Department Awards Recognition and Retirement Ceremony. I thank you for being here tonight as we're going to recognize some special people in our organization. At this time, we want to ask you to rise for the presentation of the colors by the Fire Department Honor Guard. Can we just put our hands together and celebrate those that are being celebrated this afternoon? Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at somebody standing next to you and say, it's so good to be alive and to be recognized. Amen. Come on, let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this gathering of souls. We pray that, God, as we honor these that have made sacrifice to achieve, God, we want them to understand and know that we appreciate all their efforts and that it is not in vain. We pray that as they have learned and have achieved these certain goals, that God, you will use them now to touch humanity. We thank you for the opportunity of being a part of celebrating and encouraging those who have achieved the goals that they've set out for. And God, we pray that you will just cover them and protect them as they go out into the world to do the things that you've called them to. And Father, even as we gather in this place this evening, let those be blessed that hear, let those celebrate that hear those things that they have achieved. And we pray that every family in this building be blessed because of your love towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'd like to uh, recognize some honorable guests we have tonight. First on the stage with me tonight, we have our mayor, David Combs. Um, you just heard from Chaplain Anderson. Uh, assist <laughs> Assistant Chief Ronnie Raper. And Battalion Chief Corey Mercer. We have a few more guests in the crowd. Assistant City Manager Tasha Logan Ford. And I believe there's a few councilmen coming later. They were in a budget meeting but I think a few of them will be on in a few minutes. Um, Fire Department retirees, I've seen some retirees in the crowd. Thank you all for coming. And, but most of all, uh, our honor guests, of course, are our honorees tonight and their family members. Uh, we really appreciate you all coming and being a part of this program tonight. Um, we thank you for joining us as we recognize the very best in our department. Um, these employees that are being recognized tonight have demonstrated through their experience, their training, their education, that they have what it takes and they go above and beyond each and every day to make our community a safer place. Um, they should be congratulated for the significant step that they're taking in their fire service careers. We have some that are retiring, that have retired, we're recognizing tonight, and we want to thank them for their selfless sacrifice over the years of dedicated service. They have made the, li the lives of many a much better place. I want to thank the Employee Recognition Committee um, Chief Mercer is actually heading that committee up, so we thank him and his leadership in that committee. The Benevolent Fund for the meal tonight, that will be provided by the Benevolent Fund and its members. Um, they've been working hard all day to get that ready for us. We'll have a great meal. And then, of course, the Retirement Committee as well. At this time, I want to ask Mayor Combs to come forward and say a few words. Uh, I do want to just say thank you for those that are retiring and being recognized for that retirement for all your years of service to the city of Rocky Mount. Um, I, I can tell you that I've experienced on quite a few occasions with elderly parents uh, when our fire department showed up, when we needed them to, did a great job every time. Uh, not that our, our area rescue service doesn't do a great job, but in many times uh, the fire department was there first and uh, they, the EMS service took over after that. So want to thank you for, for those times that you showed up uh, when my parents were growing older and had physical problems and had to be uh, transported. Um, I will say this, when I ran for mayor the first time, I had a friend of mine that said, David, you need to do two things. You need to spend one night riding around with the police officer. And um, it was quite an experience. And we, we, we started at 10 o'clock in the morning. I think we finished up at 4 in the morning. And there's a whole uh, another 
I guess, social atmosphere out there at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and, and you're wondering what people are doing. Um, I'm sleeping normally, so I, I didn't know that there was another world out there, but it was. And the other thing they asked me to do or said it would be a great idea is spend the night at the fire department. So when I ran the first time, I did spend the night uh, with the fire department, and almost every time um, I, I would get ready to go to sleep, the alarm would go off one more time. And so uh, I don't think I got a full night's sleep that night, but it was an experience riding on the truck. They would not let me slide down the pole. That was the one thing they wouldn't let me do. But it was a great experience, and as far as I'm concerned, probably every council member, anybody that would ever be your mayor would, would probably be great to spend one night with the fire department and the police department to see actually what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's a great experience to me. Uh, I probably need to come do it again. I just need to get rested up before I come, but I know they, uh, it's, it's like a fraternity. Uh, they also eat well at the fire department because they love to cook and eat good food. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a, almost like a fraternity and the, they look after each other and, and that's important in the work that they do. I want to thank the families that also support our firefighters and uh, people that are involved in, in this on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, without your support, they probably couldn't do what they do. And so again, I want to thank the family, the family members, and uh, those of you that work so hard for our fire department here in the city of Rocky Mount. Thank you all for being here. It's a great night. There's a lot of awards up here. And again, to our award winners and retirees, thank you for your service to Rocky Mount. Thank you. I always wanted to take a moment and bring you all greetings from the city manager's office. Um, our interim city manager, Steve Raper, is um, still in session with council. We had a budget meeting tonight. But it was important for us to um, come here and, and for me to come here. And I'll share with you um, just a, a personal story. I think most of you, um, or some of you here know that um, I have a little one that, at home now that, that's one years old. And um, there are some things that I've learned, I think, in this last year that I think uh, relate to the work that you all do as firemen, firefighters, those in, in the fire service. You know, when I, when I look at him, I sit there and, and there's some times where, where you're just tired. Um, you know, there, there's always a need to be met. There's always um, something that, that you need to do either right then in that moment or either preparing for the next thing that's going to come. And, um, you know, for me, at, at one time I, I thought about it as, as service. Um, but I quickly realized by looking at him that it's not about service. What I do as a mom, and I think that what you all do in the fire service is, is about love. There's a love that you all have for other people. You often see people when they're at their worst. They're looking at you. They're depending on you. They need you to be there. They need you to be at your best. They need you to be well-trained. And I'm so proud when I look at what we do here at the city of Rocky Mountain, when I see each one of you and what you've accomplished, things that we're recognizing tonight, because it's the love that you have for other people and for service that makes you successful in your jobs. So I just want to thank you each one of you that's an employee of the city of Rocky Mount for the love that you give every day and also for your families for how they support you every day in what you do it doesn't go unnoticed we don't say it all the time we don't say it every time we see you but I want to let you know tonight that we appreciate the sacrifices that you give each day and I appreciate the work that you do so thank you for letting me be here tonight and I'm looking forward to celebrating this award ceremony and recognizing those that are retiring first we're going to recognize our retiree group um, as always, this is a very special group of uh, of men and women that we that we have always enjoyed the time we spent with them, as well as the uh, the contributions they made to our organization in, in so many ways. So we want to take this time to uh, to bring their their last supervisor to the uh, podium to speak about them for a few minutes before we bring them up. So um, I'd like to ask Battalion Chief of Operations, but uh, Dewan Taylor, to come up and speak about fire engineer Tom Perry, who retired on November 1st, 2016. Good evening. Uh, I was told by Chief Raper and Chief Warnell to be uh, brief. So uh, I try to keep it brief. I assured them I would give them three. I'm about to close, and I'll keep that down to one. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure, really it is a pleasure to uh, talk about Tom briefly this evening. Tom joined the department in uh, 1985. He retired officially 
October 2017, and he shared the citizens of Rocky Mount for 31 plus years. For, for, for that, Tom, on behalf of the city, on behalf of the city of Rocky Mount Fire Department, we thank you for that. He is joined this evening by his fiance, Miss Amanda Bell. Uh, his son, JR, could not be with us this evening. His son is on deployment, I believe. Tom told me his son is on deployment. Tom was promoted to fire engineer in January 2004. He was first assigned to station number five. This thing gets in my sight. <laughs> Get it right here. His first assigned station was station five. His last assigned station was station four, where he's assigned with Captain Steve Johnson, Tommy Macias, and Tyler Bird. Some memorable things about Tom was Tom always gave. He was a giver. Tom gave to the United Way. He always participated in the blood drive, the city blood drive. Uh, he was a member and a supporter of the Benevolent Fund. He gave to the needy families. And he oftentimes often participated in the Keep America Clean campaign. Tom is an instructor for the American Red Cross. Uh, I'm sorry, for the American Heart Association. He taught hundreds of people, not the many mem the members that he taught in the organization, but he taught members in National Ashcombe County and other folks throughout the city of Rocky Mount. Tom also was teaching churches and civic groups. And Tom did all this by never asking for anything. He never got compensated, never looked for, or expected to be compensated for what he did. He was a dedicated member to the organization and to the members of this organization. Um, Tom oftentimes would help others prepare for tests and teach them or work with them on preparing for the uh, Inspector Con Ed test or the EMT test. I also like to personally thank Tom because Tom taught Red Cross, and he taught it at uh, up on that Central High. And he taught my daughter, I think he remembers, and he spoke to her, and she came home all excited because she met Mr. Perry. She met Mr. Perry. And after I got to see, uh, uh, talk to Tom, Tom really encouraged her and supported her. Tom, even when he would see me at times at the station, would ask me, how's she doing? How's she doing? So Tom was a sincere person. He always gave of himself, always gave him a time, of his time. And I think several guys in here tell you, when they want to study for a test to prepare for something to do, first thing somebody will haul out, call Tom. On behalf of the city, Tom, I'd like to thank you for your efforts, thank you for your time, thank you for your career and the service you gave to the citizen of Rocky Mount. Tom Perry, will you please come forward. privilege and honor to work here for 31 years. I look here at some young people here. You turn around, look beside you, look behind you, all the guys here, this is family. No matter what happens, home, here, you're a family. If you don't call on each other to help, they don't know you need your help. Ask. Young people right here. Uh, Chief Raper was my first recruit, a rookie. 28 years ago, right? And understand, he asked and he learned, see where he's at. And a bunch of captains and senior, senior firefighters here and engineer here asked for my help. And it gives me great privilege to give. A failure is someone who stops. But you're not a favor if you keep on trucking and learning how to overcome that block in front of you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Next, I'd like to ask Battalion Chief of Safety and Training, Carl Moore, to come up and speak for Ms. Administrative Secretary, Demita Person. Good evening. Let me go and adjust it, what Chief Taylor had. It. Um, this evening, I had the honor and privilege of being introducing Mr. Demita Person. Um, Mr. Demita started a career department in 2006, Administrative Tech Secretary for Safety and Training Section. Uh, for many years, most of us communicated with Mr. Mita through a brief phone call or a brief email or a brief face-to-face -face discussion when we needed something to deal with training. Um, the media had a new understanding of how important her role was in our department. When we talked to her, when we needed something, we called her. 
No. Um, she was the voice and the face of the safety and training section. If you needed something dealing with it, you called her. Um, for individuals seeking employment, they called Mr. Mita. Mr. Mita handled thousands of phone calls, hundreds of emails when we dealt with hiring processes. She scheduled the meetings, the strength and agility. She took care of taking care of the documentation, making sure we were pointing in the right direction if we kind of veered off course a little bit. Um, she is one of the kindest, humble, and the most patient individual I have the opportunity of working with. Um, I, know, I know I've tested those patients on a few occasions, so. <laughs> um, she's always found a way to make things work and truly made our division and department a better place. She's always, and I truly miss her every day, trust me. <laughs> um, every time you walked in the office, she's always had a smile on your face, asked you how you were doing. Every time you seen her, no matter how she was feeling or what was going on, she always had a smile on her face. And when people come in, that's what they're seeing. She, like I said, she was a face of the department. Kind, humble. Um, she, and kind of talking about it a little bit, kind of think about it going in. She, if I always said something or want to change a little bit, being in a new position, she always come in the office. I, I kind of go with her in her office. Within a few minutes, she's standing at my door and say, this might not work. <laughs> so, but in the end, she always found a way to make it work, and she always found a direction to go with it, and it always come out to the end the betterment of the department. Um, I want to thank you truly for your help with me in my new position and what you've done to guide me through, through this point right now, and thank you for everything you've done for the organization, Mr. Meter Person. Next, I'd like to ask Battalion Chief Corey Mercer to come up and speak on Fire Engineer Gary Atkinson. Good evening. Fire Engineer Gary Atkinson. Fire Engineer Gary Atkinson was hired on July 7, 1997 as a firefighter. He was promoted to the rank of Senior Firefighter on November 23, 2002, and on July 5th, 2003, he was promoted to the rank of fire engineer, a position he held until his retirement on February 1st, 2017. Gary was the owner and operator of a local swimming pool company here in Rocky Mount. He also had a hobby of diving, and his acquaintance with water on his days off led to his involvement of his special teams. Gary was a member of the uh, City of Rocky Mount Fire Department dive team. There, fire engineer action served as a faithful groundsman for the team up to his retirement. He also attended all the training and assisted with the several dive missions that the uh, group has had. Fire Engineer <coughs> Atkinson was also involved in other special projects within the fire department. He was a long-standing member of the Christmas Committee. Dale Gary spearheaded and organized many of the department's last few Christmas gatherings. He would also offer to underwrite some of the costs and would al also offer gifts, prizes on behalf of his company. Gary was also a member of the retirement committee up to his retirement. Gary has always had a strong passion for the fire department and it showed with his overall work ethic and his action on special teams and committees. He was also a member of the, the organization baseball team at one point. Uh, rumor had it that Gary attended a culinary school and if you ever worked for him, you have tasted some of his wonderful meals. I say some of them because all of them was not wonderful, but for some reason or another, if it, did, if, it, if it did not turn out well, he would add a little sugar and make it sweet, and so everything was all right. Um, <clears throat> I had the privilege of working with Gary for several years at number two. Um, during, that, during that time, uh, we ran the majority of the department's call of anybody at Station 2. We had many sleepless nights together, but we all made many mistakes. My most fond remember, remembrance of Gary is one night we had a, a call, and Gary turned out the station and turned left. We got to the railroad tracks, and he looked at me, and I was staring at him. And he said, well, Captain, he said, what's wrong? I can't find the house. I said, Gary was right across the street from the station. But uh, we turned around, and we went to the house, and everything worked out fine. Uh, Gary was a hard worker, and we both, worked, we both learned from each other. 
Um, his meals was phenomenal. Everybody that know Gary, know Gary has a, a kind and uh, gentle heart. Uh, he was always so willing to help anyone that he could. And I present to you Gary X. Well, about 10 years too early, if you ask me, but um, I'd like to thank God foremost for me being here. As most of y'all know, um, I had a heart attack August the 20th, was the last day I drove a fire truck. And um, I'm thankful that I'm here. I'm thankful to my family, especially my wife. Uh, 20 years, you know, raising our kids, and um, it's just been, it's been, <sighs> um, it's been nice. I mean, um, I've enjoyed my career. Like I said, I wish it would last to 10 more years. Um, thankful to my, my dad that he can be here. Um, he told me a story um, when I was growing up. I was either going to do law enforcement or firefighting. Because as many of y'all know, he's a retired state trooper. And uh, growing up as a kid, I would leave out of the house, and if he didn't say bye to me, I run down the street because we lived on Hunter Hill Road, and I chase after him. And I, you know, he stop, and I get my hug, and I say, "I love you, Dad, and don't get shot." <laughs> and um, you know, and he told me today that he said, "Son, he said, the day you wake up and you get tired of putting that uniform on is the day you need to look at another job." And I can honestly say and sit here and tell all y'all that I never had that day. I mean, I never. When I got up in the morning, I was ready to go to work. I was ready to put that uniform on and help the citizens of Rocky Mount and anybody else that needed help. Um, and I ask that y'all carry that on, especially you young guys. Um, you know, I know it's tough at night, the 3 a.m. calls, the sleepless nights, and have to work a second job and so forth. But uh, just keep your nose to the grindstone. We're like family, okay? And if there's anything I can ever do for you guys, um, just I'm a phone call away. Um, I really appreciate it, and it's glad to be here, and y'all take care. God bless. Thank you, Gary. The uh, last retiree we would like to recognize as is unable, she was unable to be with us tonight, but we certainly wanted to mention Miss Administrative Assistant Vicki Price. She uh, was the, the firehouse mom for many years, and uh, many of us felt that way and continue to feel that way in a lot of ways from the past we've had with her as well as uh, with Miss Tilly, Tilly before. So um, we wanted to mention her. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here tonight. So. <laughs> Next, we're going to recognize our personnel who were promoted first to fire engineer, then next to senior firefighter. So if everyone being recognized for being promoted to fire engineer would come up to the top of the steps, please. First, we have fire engineer Jim Gardner. He was hired as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mountain Fire Department on March 8, 2006. <clears throat> Excuse me. He held the position of firefighter until being promoted to senior firefighter on October 28, 2011, and most recently to fire engineer on January 28th of 2017. He holds an associate's in fire protection technology he is married to his wife, Tiffany, and they have two sons named Bryce and Scott. He is a member of South Edgecombe Rural Fire Department, Regional Response Team 1, Hazardous Materials Team for North Carolina, and Rocky Mount Swiftwater Emergency Rescue Team. Fire Engineer Gardner, please come forward. Next, we have Fire Engineer Cameron Joyner. He was hired with, as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mountain Fire Department on July 21st, 2003. <clears throat> he held the position of a firefighter until being promoted to senior firefighter <clears throat> on September 9th, 2006, and most recently promoted to fire engineer on August 13th of 2016. Cameron holds an associate's in emergency preparedness technology and is married to his wife, Emily. Fire Engineer Jordan, please come forward. <clears throat> 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 
<clears throat> okay. Next, we have fire engineer Joel Rawls. He was hired as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mount Fire Department on October 9th, 2006. He held the position of firefighter until being promoted to senior firefighter in November of 2011, and most recently promoted to fire engineer on January 28th of 2017. Joel is married to his wife, Lauren, and they have a son named Maverick. Fire engineer Rawls, please come forward. Congratulations. <clears throat> <clears throat> Next, if all the, those being recognized for promotion to senior firefighter would come forward. Senior firefighter Josh Garris was hired as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mount Fire Department on July 21st, 2013. He held the position of firefighter until being promoted to senior firefighter on August 27th of 2016. Josh is married to his wife, Megan, and they have a daughter named Molly. Senior Firefighter Garris, please come forward. <clears throat> Senior Firefighter Stephen Gupton was hired as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mount Fire Department on August 8, 2011. Gupton has three children named Darian, Brianna, and Brian Shell. He is a member of Cornerstone Community Church as well. Senior Firefighter Gupton, please come forward. Thanks. Next, we have Senior Firefighter Cody Johnson. He was hired as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mount Fire Department on August 8, 2011. He held the position of firefighter until being promoted to senior firefighter on October 22, 2016. Cody is married to his wife, Heather, and they have two children named Aiden and Eason. Senior Firefighter Johnson, please come forward. <clears throat> Next, we have Senior Firefighter Martin Strickland, who was hired as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mount Fire Department on June 22nd of 2013. He graduated Wilson Community College Fire Academy in 2010 and is married to his wife, Catherine. Senior Firefighter Strickland is a member of the Rocky Mount Technical Emergency Rescue Team and the Rocky Mount Fire Department Health and Wellness Committee. Senior Firefighter Strickland, please come forward. <laughs> Okay, next. Congratulations. Uh, next, we'll be moving forward to recognition for our, our EMS awards. As you can see by the table, we have a large number for this particular ceremony. We're, we're doing something a little different. Um, in the past, our EMS awards were considered life-saving awards. And what that meant was when our personnel would respond to an emergency and arrive with a, a person with no pulse or respirations, when the person left and went to the hospital and was assisted at the hospital as well and discharged neurologically intact, that was considered a, a life-saving award. Um, as some of you may have read in our annual report, as you can see online, we are, are at 19.5% of a, for our award for saves in our community, which is a pretty good award. So uh, this particular award, as well as our next, which is a return of spontaneous circulation award, are the, are the, the reasons that, that we provide service. So um, first, there'll be seven groups for the EMS Life Saving Award. And again, that's discharged neurologically intact. The other 15 groups are for return of spontaneous circulation, where our personnel arrived on scene, where the person had no pulse or respirations, and when the person left the scene, they had a pulse and respirations, whether they passed away later at, after at a later time. So, um, as I call one group, if the whole crew this is here and they'll come on up, I'm gonna go ahead and call the next since we have so many. So, we'll begin. 
The following employees are being recognized as a crew for their emergency response efforts. As a result of their emergency medical knowledge and skill, along with their diligent efforts, the patient in their, res patient in their respective events survived. So please join us in recognizing our, our firefighters with their contributions. First, we have Lexington Street, Fire Captain STO Trip Bunn, Fire Captain Mike Dawson, Fire Engineer Jonathan Whitley, and Firefighter David Dugas. And as all the crews come up, as we have been doing, if you'll come up on this side and the whole crew will remain on stage for a photo and to receive your plaques, then we'll progress to the next group. The next group to come up, South Circle Drive, Fire Captain Matt Hux, Fire Engineer Guy Vick, Firefighter Aaron Pike, and Firefighter Danny Witherington. Okay, next, intersection of Church Street and Renfro Street, Fire Captain Stan Smith, Fire Engineer Joey Creech, Fire Engineer Austin Joyner, Senior Firefighter Jim Gardner at the time, Firefighter Cody Johnson, and Firefighter Misty Moore. Next, Short Spoon Circle, Fire Captain STO Corey Strange, Fire Engineer John Hughes, Senior Firefighter Jonathan Langley, Senior Firefighter Kirby Turner, and Firefighter Taylor Moore. Next, Edinburgh Road, Fire Captain Sam Clark, Fire Captain STO Corey Strange, Fire Engineer Zach Updike, Senior Firefighter Justin Cannon, and Firefighter Aaron Pike. Next group, Turnstone Drive, Fire Captain Brett Skinner, Fire Engineer Kerry Dennis, 
Firefighter Johnny Howard and Firefighter William Proctor. Next group, Kane Drive, Battalion Chief Darvin Moore, Fire Captain Lee Bailey, Fire Captain Jeff Swanner, Fire Engineer Jonathan Whitley, and Firefighter Chad Cutler. All right. Next are our awards for return of spontaneous circulation. First crew, Leggett Road, Fire Captain STO, Chad Spruill, Fire Engineer Austin Joyner, and Firefighter Jamison Joyner. All right, next crew, Park Avenue, Battalion Chief Eric Sumlin, Fire Captain John Barnhill, Fire Engineer Andrew Brown, Firefighter David Dugas, and Firefighter Daniel Stith. Next group, Winston Walk, Fire Captain Jeff Swanner, Fire Engineer Joel Rawls, Senior Firefighter Detron Phillips, and Firefighter Thomas Painter. Next group, South Winston Avenue. Fire Captain Corey Woodard, Fire Engineer Gary Atkinson, Firefighter Kalen Burrell, and Firefighter Martin Strickland. Next group, Paul Street, Fire Captain Billy Baker, Senior Firefighter Detron Phillips, Firefighter Michael Mills, and Firefighter Thomas Painter. Next group, 
Russell Street. Battalion Chief Eric Summerlin, Fire Engineer Andrew Brown, and Senior Firefighter Tyler Hinton. Next group, Mill Street. Fire Captain STO Chad Spruill, Fire Captain Gary Wood, Fire Engineer Bo Clark, Senior Firefighter Maurice Kingsbury, and Firefighter Adam Spivey. Next, English Road. Fire Captain Randy Lanham. Fire Captain STO Corey Strange, Fire Engineer Jet Webb, and Firefighter Taylor Moore. Next group, South Halifax Road, Fire Captain Brett Skinner, Fire Engineer Kerry Dennis, Firefighter Johnny Howard, and Firefighter William Proctor. Next group, North Mercer Street. Fire Captain Lee Bailey. Fire Captain STO Trip Bunn. Fire Engineer Jonathan Whitley. And Senior Firefighter Damian Whitley. Next group, Cokie Road. Fire Captain Mike Dawson, Fire Engineer Lamont Morgan, and Firefighter Jeremy Wells. Next group, Meadowview Lane, Fire Captain Corey Woodard, Senior Firefighter John Miller, Firefighter Kalen Burrell, Firefighter James Revis. Next group. South Fairview Road, Fire Captain Jamie Cook, Fire Captain STO Chad Spruill, Fire Engineer Maurice Woodley, and Firefighter Jamison Joyner.
Okay. Next group, South Isle Street. Fire Captain Billy Baker, Fire Engineer Corey Leonard, Firefighter Tanner Garris, and Firefighter Thomas Painter. And last but certainly not least, Powell Drive. Fire Captain Billy Baker, Fire Captain STO Trip Bunn, Fire Engineer Coy Leonard, Senior Firefighter Tyler Hinton, Senior Firefighter Detron Phillips, Senior Firefighter Damian Whitley, and Firefighter Thomas Painter. Let's give all of our recipients for EMS applause. <laughs> okay, next we're going to proceed to our Employee of the Year awards. This is, there are three categories in which our employees are nominated and voted upon to receive awards each year. Uh, one of them is the Officer of the Year. Next is Firefighter of the Year and a staff employee of the year. And as I stated, our employees make the nominations and then vote on the employees they feel are most deserving for each of these awards. So we're gonna begin with our Officer of the Year Award, Michael Corey Strange. <laughs> Captain Strange was hired as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mount Fire Department on July 21, 2003. He held the position of firefighter until being promoted to senior firefighter on September 9, 2006, and then to fire engineer on September 19, 2007. He was promoted to fire captain on July 9, 2009, and most recently reclassified as a safety and training captain on March 20, 2015. Captain Strange is married to his wife Elizabeth, and they have a son named Miles. Next, we have the Firefighter of the Year Award, Antonio Maurice Woodley. <laughs> fire Engineer Woodley was hired as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mount Fire Department on July 7, 1997, until September 25, 2006. He was a contract firefighter in Iraq for one year and was rehired with the Rocky Mount Fire Department on November 17, 2007, until March 10, 2008, when he was promoted to senior firefighter. He held the position of senior firefighter until being promoted to fire engineer on May 21, 2016. Fire engineer Willie is married to his wife, Chastity, and has four sons, one daughter, and one stepson. And Staff Employee of the Year, Carl E. Moore the Third. <laughs> Battalion Chief Moore was hired as a firefighter with the City of Rocky Mount on October 30, 2000. He held the position of firefighter until being promoted to senior firefighter in 2004 and then to fire engineer in 2005. He was promoted to fire captain in January 2009 and most recently promoted to battalion chief of safety and training in 2015. He holds an associate in arts degree in emergency preparedness and is married to his wife Amber with two sons named Mason and Jace. Congratulations to each of our employees of the year.
Okay, this last, this last award is a commendation. This is something we wanted to do for a while now, um, but I'm glad we got the opportunity to do it tonight. Um, this person is uh, a, a great person to, for our organization. He does a lot behind the scenes. Um, he does a Bible study each week. He prays for the sick, those having children. Uh, he prays for the safety of our guys and girls each and every night. Um, he just does a lot for us behind the scenes, and we really, really thank him. We, we can't tell him enough what he means to us as a fire department chaplain. So, Chaplain Anderson, we want to recognize you as the Rocky Mountain Fire Department, your service, dedication to the department, its members, and the community as our fire department chaplain. Your tireless efforts, dedication to providing the highest level of service is greatly appreciated. Okay, uh, last but certainly not least, we're going to do something that we typically haven't done in our ceremonies, but we felt it felt led to do it this time to, uh, to make sure we included all of our employees. Obviously, we included our retirees, promotees, recipients for various awards, but we also wanted to recognize our, our employees that have been hired since our last service. So, um, if, if any of these employees are present, if they would please come up and stand on the stage, we would like to get a group picture as well as to introduce those of you who may not met them to our newest employees. Uh, first, Katie Pate, our administrative assistant. <laughs> Katina Phillips, our fire information system specialist. <laughs> Lamont Blue, firefighter. Tyler Clark, firefighter. <laughs> Dylan Lassiter, firefighter. <laughs> Adam Ward, firefighter. <laughs> William Colson, firefighter. Taylor Moore, firefighter. And Michael Mills, firefighter. Welcome to the family. In closing, I just want to say how um, appreciative I am for everybody coming tonight. I know we had several that were missing tonight, but uh, we will get their awards to them um, the next day they work. Uh, we're very excited about where we're going as an organization, and, and this group is a big part of that transition. Uh, we want to thank these fine young firefighters for participating in this event, and we look forward to their future accomplishments. Some logistics, uh, Chaplain Anderson was going to offer a, a prayer in just a second, but for, for logistics, um, when we get through the service, if we get everybody that was honored tonight to come up, we want to do one group picture. Everybody else can go out the back of the theater, go down the hallway, and the meal is ready to be served. And there's plenty of seats. We've got seating for 250. So please enjoy the meal and fellowship. And we want to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight. We really, really appreciate your support. So at this time, I ask Chaplain Anderson to come up and close us in bid and Chief said I could say a few words because I was getting ready to recognize my own self. I, they surprised me with a plaque tonight, <laughs> praise God. But I'm, I'm the chaplain for Rocky Mountain, and I'm so honored to be a part of such a tremendous team. I've been married 43 years, had seven children, one wife, and I, I'm just excited about what all I see God doing here in the city of Rocky Mountain. And I thank you all for accepting me, amen, as, to be a part of the family and part of the team. I appreciate it so much. And even though I'm a pastor and my church is right across the street from the main uh, fire department, I'm not trying to replace your pastors. I'm just, we're just here to be able to be a, 
a source of encouragement and strength during your times of weaknesses and things that you may go through. My number is always available. I, I was so blessed um, not too long ago, uh, a sister of one of the firemen called me and concerned, you know, their relative on the fire department. And I was just so blessed to know that, you know, they do know I'm in the background like a virus protection program. Amen. So just wanted to just give you a little background on who I am and been pastoring for 23 years. So I'm just honored to be a part of your team. Thank you for having me. Amen. So at this time, <clears throat> thank you. And at this time, I'm going to pray for this part of the service and also bless the food. Is that all right? Father, we just want to thank you for such an awesome, awesome occasion this evening. Thank you for the families turning out. And God, it's so good to see families banding together and celebrating one another. And God, even as we depart this place, but not your presence, abide with us. Show us our way and protect us as we ride the streets. And these that are going out, when others are running away from problems, they're running to problems. And God, I just pray that you continue to motivate them and keep them covered in, under your divine protection. And now as we leave from here to go to the fellowship hall, we pray that you bless the hands that prepared the food and that you will use it as a strength and also a great fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen.